In this tutorial, I'm going to go through and show you how to set up your model to work with subdivisions. So here I am, I'm on my high poly sword. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split it into different elements. They'll still be part of the same model, but they're going to be different elements. They won't all be uh, connected as one contiguous mesh, meaning if I click on it, it's all one mesh right now. So I'm going to separate it into elements. So here I have the blade. I'm going to take that and come over here to edit geometry, detach, and I click on detach. And I just want to do detach to element. So it no longer needs a name because it's still part of the same mesh. Now I'll come through and I'll grab the handle. And I think I'll probably just grow this up a little bit more. And I'm going to detach that to an element as well. All right, there we go. Okay, so let's take this sword, and what we want to do is we're going to set this up to work with NERMS. So we turn on NERMS, it's going to smooth out our model. Right now everything goes to mush, and what we need to do is define these different portions. So if I come in here to Polygon, or go into any of the sub-objects really, you see the cage. The cage is the actual vertex points. And so what's happening is between the vertex point, the software is going through and rounding out the model. So there's a number of ways we can go through and fix this. Uh, the primary one that we're going to use is actually here in Polygon, there's an option up there that I already floated called Edit Geometry. And what I want to find is Swift Loop. And so now I'm going to turn off NERMS, zoom in a little bit. And so you can see wherever I click on an edge, it draws a loop. And so basically Swift Loop is going to go through when I click creates a loop right there. And so that's the same process if I right click out of that. That would be the same process if I went through, clicked on an edge, clicked ring, and then hit connect and use slide. Now this tool actually goes through and does it very quick and very interactive. And all I do is I just move it where I want it and I click and it actually creates the loop right there. Now when I turn on NERMS you see that Anywhere where I'm defining these edges with the swift loop, the geometry is holding its shape better. Watch what happens here when I define this. You see how those edges come out more? So that's really what swift loop is. You know, one good use for it is going through and defining edges in this kind of fashion, right? And so what we're doing is NERMS is non-uniform rational mesh smooth and what it's doing right now is this is just going through our model and helping us really define the basic shape of it all right we're going through i'm going to turn that off you don't have to work with it on it's something that you could toggle on and off basically anywhere you have a peak points that come out far enough you kind of want to frame it with edges and a valley you want to frame those as well because that way when you turn on the nerves the model holds it preserves its shape much better. There we go. So you see how it's it's getting more round, right? It's getting a more exciting shape, right? More dynamic shape. There we go. So if I come in here, I'm going to go to the blade. Kind of wanted to find that edge of the blade here. There we go. And so I can work off of this cage kind of going through and defining those points. And so part of the reason I wanted to separate the elements is because there's some areas on here, like along, along the length of the blade here, where I really need to go in and really define an edge, but I don't want that edge necessarily to travel all the way up into the rest of the model. Right. Like I definitely want it here on my sword, but I don't necessarily want those shapes going all the way up. So I'll just keep working my way around, kind of defining my edges here with my swift loop. And we're just 
going through and defining those areas. All right. So you can see now when I come in and turn this on, the sword's going to preserve its shape a lot better. And the areas that I don't, I haven't defined any extra loops there. See how it just kind of all mushes out? But as soon as I come in and kind of define that area, model's going to hold its shape a lot better. And here I'm just, the orange represents our actual model. You can see as soon as I drop those edges in, how it really starts to preserve its shape. Uh, down here at the bottom of the sword, I'm going to get out a swift loop. So I think we've got everything we need from the swift loop going all the way around. Yeah. So what we need to do now is we're just going to have to take a lot of these points and just kind of connect them down to the tip. Um, that's going to be our best bet. So just kind of taking these points and I'm just going to use target weld. And target weld's going to allow me to take vertex points and target weld them down here. Uh, in this case, there's another tool that I'm going to use. I'm going to select all of these polygons here. And I'm going to use what's called slice plane. I'm going to hit Z to zoom out. Or that didn't work, so I just used my mouse. I'm going to go into rotate and turn on angle. So now if I rotate this 90 degrees, anywhere I place this, anywhere I position this, is going to come in here and allow me to, if I click, it makes a slice right there, right? So it's going to divide the geometry. So it's one way to get a nice, clean line in there. All right. So that kind of takes those points in. I actually don't want this one here yet. I'm going to remove that loop. And now if I turn on NERMS to check it, it's holding its shape better. Uh, it's probably be good if I went through and connected more of these points down here so that they weren't just being uh, making a giant n-gon here, an n-gon being a polygon that's made up of more than four sides. I'm going to collapse these points. I'm going to collapse the ones on the back as well. I really don't need that uh, subdivision that's happening in the center. You know, it would probably make this a lot easier if I went into the blade and just changed the color of it here. There's no need for it to be to be that shiny blue. That was really just for kind of demo purposes before. Before. There we go. Hey, look at that. It's a lot easier to see. Yeah. If I re-record this, I'll be sure to make that change. All right. Uh, let's see. Going around the model. Take a look at what we got. All right, now I'm just going to continue taking these points, which I could probably grab all of them and just grab the points down here and say connect. And for the most part, that went horribly wrong. Okay, just select one, come down, click on a point, say connect, point, point. The semicolon will repeat last action. There we go. Just kind of working our way around. Hopefully you don't have a lot of weird points on your model, so you don't have to do as much painstaking manual work as this. But the result's going to be worth it. All right. There we go. Okay. So if I turn on NERMS, see how the sword starts to hold its shape a lot better. Now I could come in again with my swift loop and kind of define the tip. Now it's not working here because these aren't four-sided polygons. So if I grabbed everything that made up the bottom here and used my slice plane, drag that up, and you can see where I'm dragging it happens to be where the intersection is. So I can just position to where I want and hit slice. And now let's check NERMS. Hold in the shape that you wanted for years to come. All right, there we go. So that's that's effectively how you can use uh, NERMS. Uh, if I turn in, I'm gonna auto smooth my model here. And then if I turn that on, when I export out this model, it is going to subdivide it in that fashion. So 
there we go. That's the process of subdomain. Uh, it'd be a great idea if you want. You could take this sword now and rebake out your low poly to this version uh, and see you'll see a much nicer result come out.